doesn't speak English. This world is upside down. Control. I did something unexpected today. To our people. Here's number five. Big flash, like a pink light, or actually, I don't even know what color it was. It wasn't like any color I'd ever seen before. It looks like a meteorite. After watching 2018's Mandy with an equally twisted, neorealist, psycho psychological, mind-bending Nicolas Cage going full Nicolas Cage, I am ready for a, another Nick Cage mind-twisting descent film into chaos with a hyper-realist production and synth music also. I really like these off-the-wall type of films. Terry Gilliam is one of my favorite directors. Uh, I've talked about his film Fisher King in this uh, video right here. Uh, and it's that threshold between strange and surreal and abstract, but the director ultimately having the tools to bring it back into reality and grounding it into some semblance of what we can connect to. Um, this film marks the comeback of director Richard Stanley, whose tumultuous ordeal with the film The Island of Dr. Moreau made him quit the business for 20 years. Um, and this film is also based on H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, who's... Uh, weird Tale Pulp Magazine, Lovecraftian Horror has inspired a generation of artists from John Carpenter to Guillermo del Toro. Similarly, if you want to delve into the far reaches of your psychological threshold, watch this film, sober or otherwise. Oh, how you have it in. I heard you're coaching basketball. Yeah, keeps me busy, keeps my mind off other things, you know. Won't you settle down, baby? You guys earn this tonight. So Ben Affleck has spoken very openly about his battle with alcohol, that emotional, this is an emotional acting tour de force because he's really coming from the heart for this portrayal right here. Coupled with my love for sports, youth empowerment films since Coach Carter, Remembering the Titans, The Mighty Ducks, right, so on, really sets the film apart from just another crowd-pleasing like, you know the team, the underdog team is going to make the final basket. So, like, why are we watching this film? It's a metaphor that we've seen before, right? The battle for our soul, for our psyches, depicted through the ritualistic aspects in sports. The diligence, self-discipline, teamwork, structure, work ethic that is needed to excel in those physical endeavors helps create the psychological and spiritual fuel which gives our life meaning, social cohesion, and purpose. I work with so many children and teenagers whose love of sports and talking to them about their love of sports, connecting it to their psychology, really sparks their internal combustion to lay out a framework for their lives. This film really impacted me because we've all suffered from addiction in so many ways, hidden or covertly, one form or another. And that upward climb is one of the most loneliest roads any person can traverse but we need to tell ourselves that we should never expect ourselves to do it alone. So I, I, this is a great, great film. One of my favorite sports films within these past couple of years. I'm David Attenborough and I am 93. I've had the most extraordinary life. The living world is a unique and spectacular marvel. Yet the way we humans live on Earth is sending it into a decline. And I'm going to tell you how. I did want to feature two documentaries that have really made a lasting impact on my sense of self this past year. The first one being David, David Attenborough's Life on Our Planet. It's an autobiographical film presented as a testament to the 60 years of education um, and conservation that David Attenborough has made his life purpose. 
um, as well as a look towards the future as well, how our choices are and will invariably impact the future generations to come and our future world. I have written and spoken extensively about this concept of capitalist spirituality, uh, using these ideals for primarily narcissistic functions, such as enhancing our happiness, our sense of calm at the behest of our community and our world. That being said, I am hopeful, and there is research to suggest that embedding more mindful spiritual values in our education is one direct way to increase volunteering and altruistic behaviors as individuals form a deeper recognition of their values and better clarity on this shared existence apart from materialistic gains and social status. Uh, David Attenborough's work is one of the reasons I became so enamored with animal conservation at a very early age, and I thank him for all that he has done. And my second film, Crip Camp. At the time, so many kids just like me were being sent to institutions. It was just a continual struggle. Most disabled people, like myself, are unable to use public transportation. We needed a civil rights law of our own. If you don't demand what you believe in for yourself, you're not going to get it. I said so I had the amazing opportunity to work at a private school last year for neuropsychologically diverse individuals and it was my first exposure to the inner life of many of these individuals, sitting with them, delving into their psyches, intertwining their narrative with my own, something which truly benefited my sense of self. I mean, I'm remembering so many of the therapy sessions or even just conversations I've had with people who are on the autism spectrum disorder, people who have uh, physical disabilities, people who have uh, different schizoid, psychotic disorders and just speaking to them as human beings, you know, talking about dating, what God means, uh, talking about video games, right? It was such an, not just interesting, but a harrowing look into my own soul also and how we're all connected within the same essence, right? That's just my beliefs. Uh, Crip Camp follows the disability movement from its early workings in a summer camp uh, in New York through the lens of the individuals who became the pioneers in leading the charge for accessibility rights and highlighting the unique aspects of uh, these people, not just as handicapped or hindrances to our society. I would recommend people to watch this film and also be further involved in this movement because it's an ever-changing ordeal, right? We can always be, uh, our, our laws can always be more reflective of a more inclusive, compassionate society. Um, so those are my two documentaries. Now moving on to number two. You know what I wish? I wish we could do that all over again. <laughs> It'd be a little more deliberate. Uh, take our time. Take a good look at stuff. So this film is a slice of life, a piece of art and a character piece about a young boy from a Korean family who strikes a meaningful relationship with an older retiree who served in the Korean War and the confrontation that brings with our sense of self, our nationality, our preconceived notion of others, and ultimately who we are. I know personally I'm sick and tired of this narrative, especially this past political year, that we're so divided as a country, one side to the left, one side to the right, because that's not my experience at all, being an immigrant, uh, being a second generation immigrant and just being an American. This isn't to deny prejudice or systematic racism in our society, but rather to breach just what it is we are proposing as the viable solution to this. It isn't more vitriol, it isn't more harassment or condemnation. It's a recognition of the inherent worth and humanity of those who at a surface level and maybe even deeper are different from us. Uh, this film really moved me in a profound manner. Um, it's similar to Gran Torino, right? Gran Torino is also about this young Hmong, right? It's a Chinese ethnic group uh, befriending Clint Eastwood, but you know, that movie was a lot more Clint Eastwood just being Clint Eastwood, um, whereas this one is a lot more subversive, a lot more realistic. It's a small film, right? Nothing too crazy, nothing too bold or daring, but it captures this quality in film that sometimes is lacking in the spectacle we are used to. We're killing innocent people, raiding other countries, preying on the weak. 
If our leaders, if they're evil, what does one do? You have a duty to the fatherland. The church tells you so. You cannot say no to your race and your hope. You are a traitor. Whatever you do, I'm with you always. So I'm cheating a little bit on this one because it came out the last two weeks of December of 2019 and I couldn't include it in my last year's list. Although I did include Terrence Malick's uh, Soul Illuminating Tree of Life, um, which I've also highlighted in this video here. A Hidden Life follows the true story of Franz Jagerstadter, a devout Catholic and Austrian farmer who refused to fight for the Nazis during World War II. The tone of the film reminded me a lot of Hacksaw Ridge, another film about a resolute Christian man who refused to betray his ideals of pacifis pacifism for war and social belonging. Uh, this is one of the most breathtaking existential and spiritual films I have ever watched. From a purely aesthetic lens, right, the cinematography of the Austrian mountains, the rolling hills, the beautiful churches, the depiction of family life, these small random moments that only Malik can capture. Um, there's no other director who's been criticized for wasting so much of the audience's time with his uh, shots, with this type of cadence in his films. And that it's a criticism that is sometimes appropriate for him, but I think in this film it really fits very well into this picturesque sense of calm and peace we all foresee for our life, right? You know, similar to Into the Wild, which I've talked about a lot as a depiction of this escape right uh this fantasy that we have of just leaving our worries behind escaping into nature um away from the machine of modern society it's ultimately an illusion right even in this film living on this serene perfect austrian hills sooner or later the world will come and ask something of your soul and you have to answer back I made an entire video on the psychology of evil using Milgram and Zimbardo's studies on conformity and unconscious biases if you'd like to expand on that idea. But as it stands, these solitary figures are the manifestations and archetypes for the spiritual ideals we all hope to reach beyond becoming more calm, more happy, more passive in the face of injustice, true spirituality, the true figures in our spiritual philosophies came to instill in us this need to be resolute in who we are, stand up for our beliefs, even when death looks at us in the face. And I love this lyric from a rap song, it's always ringing in my head. When you're back against the wall, your character gets revealed. I mean, that begs the question, what is the nature of our souls when we are pushed into that corner? Okay. That was my top 10 films right there of 2020. A lot of films that I missed. Leave a comment, start a discussion on some films that inspired you that relate to psychology and spirituality, which you can kind of lump any film, uh, honestly, into those categories. I tried to stick to at least films that had that type of framework. But none nonetheless, what were other films that you enjoyed in this past year? Uh, I like Bad Boys 3, to be honest. That was something. like I thought Bad Boys 3 was awesome, too. Uh, Leave a comment, subscribe and support the channel. I always put...